Hello, it's me Shakti Sundari, I'm back with you again. Um, I just did a whole video with apparently no sound and didn't realise until I'd finished. Um, so I spent a long time looking into the camera and talking away and um, there's no sound. So sorry about that and I'm back. <laughs> Hopefully you can hear me this time. <laughs> I'm going to try again. So I'm reading from um, Daniel O'Day's marvellous, wonderful, powerful book. It doesn't quite fit in the screen here, which is called Desire. This book is all about how Tantra is the path of the middle way um, and how embracing our desire and our passions can be the middle way, um, not necessarily the hedonistic way that we imagine when we think of Tantra or when we think of desire but actually that the way through is the way through. That's what Tantra teaches. And um, the bit that I'm going to read from the book today is about the power of woman and the power of the feminine in this school of thought and in this pathway, which is wonderful. Of course, I'm a woman and I teach goddess wisdom and I teach the awakening feminine, so it means a lot to me. But this is also really important, actually, um, at this time. At this time in history, it's all about the rebalancing of masculine and feminine energies in the world and for men and women to really fully embrace their feminine as much as their masculine. The masculine has dominated and all the qualities of the masculine have dominated um, globally for so many centuries and that's caused a lot of problems and destruction and still is actually. And as the energy of the feminine rises once again to balance with the masculine, not to dominate or take over, but to balance, um, we're being called much more to balance in living from the heart, in connecting with and valuing our emotions and our feelings and our bodies and our sensuality. These are key aspects of the feminine. And they've been out of balance. And now we're bringing these two parts of the mind and our consciousness and our um, skillful action together with our hearts, together with our feelings, emotions, our sensuality and the body. So in Tantra and in this path of Tantra that Daniel Ojeh talks about, Kashmiri Shaivism, which is a particular path, he makes it really clear that there is no separation between woman and man. There is no separation according to caste. There is no separation according to skin colour or any of those notions which are just purely superficial. And in fact, women and the feminine have had a really important role as teachers and transmitters of knowledge. And um, as he says, that the, there is this distinction that's seen in the terms of the way the feminine receives and transmits wisdom. It's like in terms of an immediate knowing or what's called a gnosis. He doesn't use that word, but it's like an immediate knowing, an immediate embodiment, which is very different to um, the quite mental, wordy, heady, uh, lengthy um, descriptions and expurgations in texts which are quite masculine in orientation. For for the feminine, the wisdom can just come as a knowing. Uh, it doesn't necessarily need all this mental explanation and reflection. So these are two paths to wisdom. So in this book, I'm going to read you a parable that uh, Daniel Odier tells about the power of the goddess and the power of the feminine. I have to put my glasses on for this bit. Okay. Hehe. <laughs> Mm. Okay, hopefully you can hear me this time. The power of woman finds its origin in the legendary tales where it is told that the gods were troubled by the appearance of a giant phallus that set about destroying paradise. This black stone linger was devastating forests and palaces, boring through lakes, filing down mountains and hills. The gods launched their armies against him, but no force could bring an end to the situation. Then the powerless gods remembered the great goddess, whom, out of vanity, they had been ignoring. They went and bowed before her, made amends, and unanimously recognised her supremacy, on the condition that she put an end to the destructive linger. So the great goddess manifested herself in the sky, took hold of the giant phallus and slipped him into her, whereupon he experienced such pleasure that his destructive madness was completely pacified. 
Since then, it is said in Tantrism that woman represents power and man incarnates the capacity for wonder and marvel. That is a powerful story. <laughs> really powerful story. So see how the goddess, the divine feminine, embraces and takes in the masculine, which in its fullest... Um, if it's not balanced, the masculine can become destructive. And she is able to absorb him into her energy and into her being and completely pacify it. And there's a lot in there for us all now at this time. One thing that st sticks out to me is this is destruction of the natural environment, right? All around the world right now, we're destroying the natural environment. Thoughtless, mindless, being driven to more profit, to exploit without thinking what we're doing to the earth that is sustaining and supporting us. We are raping the earth and that is the masculine without the balance of the feminine. Okay. And um, the other thing that really strikes me there is the vanity. So the masculine has been ignoring the feminine out of vanity. And again, this is when things get out of balance, this sense of knowing it all, of um, not needing to consult with the feminine. And I'm speaking in very broad and philosophical terms as much as in real terms. But the feminine qualities that have been for so long um, ignored, repressed, put down, shamed, such as feelings, emotions, sensuality and the body. These must be valued and honoured and revered in equal measure with the masculine qualities of the mind, of the thinking mind, of rationality, of analysis, of logic, of skillful means and action, which are more masculine qualities. And remember, when I speak about masculine and feminine, they don't equate to man and woman. We all have both. But the masculine has been more valued in all of us, and it has destroyed and is destroying our world. <laughs> there's, a, there's hope, though, because the feminine has been rising, and she is rising. And what I'm hearing and what I'm feeling is that it's very much up to the feminine to lead the way. The feminine is not going to dominate, but it is up to that power within all of us to lead the way to the masculine, to remind him of our hearts, to remind him of love, to remind him of the importance of the body and the importance of our emotions. And we do that within ourselves, first and foremost. Um, and then, of course, that is the change that happens outside as we do that within our own beings and bring that balance. So just have that image of this super destructive linger and the great goddess manifesting in the sky, taking hold, slipping him into her. And he is reminded, he is reminded, he experiences such bliss, such pleasure, that his destructive madness comes to an end and there is peace and there is harmony. And it's that that we need to find within our own being, that beautiful peace and harmony, the wonder, the wisdom, the unity. That's my message for today. I hope you could hear me this time. <laughs> Thank you for watching and being with me. Much love and Satnam.